Hello everyone, today I'll be sharing a case of mature cataract where uh, during surgery I realized there was a large subluxation. As usual I made one sideboard incision and through which I injected Tripton Blue to stay in the capsule under the air. Then I made second sideboard incision and my main clear corneal 2.2 mm incision. It is always advised to expel out all uh, air bubbles present in the end chamber before starting your capsular access. I started making my capsular access and deliberately uh, I made uh, uh, around 5.5 mm of capsular access. Then I started my phaco fragmentation. Normally I prefer to do vertical chopping. I prepared the bed and I buried the phaco tip and started my chopping. At this stage everything was going uh, as per my expectation. I rotated the nucleus again and held the, the nucleus with the phaco tip and again I chopped the nucleus. Suddenly I realized there was a deepening of uh, antechamber in the superior part and uh, there was a large subluxation of uh, the lens. Because I was um, doing my surgery under topical anesthesia so I stopped my surgery given peribulbar anesthesia and again I prepared the patient to continue my surgery. With time we develop senses to recognize the complications quite early. I always say that every surgery is a different surgery. Because we have chosen such a profession, so we have to train our mind to face surgical complications. And with experience, we develop our skills in such a way that we start recognizing the complications quite early. Several thoughts came in my mind that uh, I can use endocapsular ring and I can use also use a capsular hook to stabilize the bag. After several thoughts I realized to handle this case in an orthodox manner. So I planned to convert the case uh, to extracapsular cataract surgery and uh, I compromised the rexis, prepared my uh, corneal incision. Before making corneal incision, always check the uh, intraocular pressure. Your eye should be always uh, soft. Now after making incision, you can realize that how big is the subluxation. Because the capsular descent was big, so I removed the nucleus in two pieces. And uh, because the whole bag was loose, so I removed the whole bag with the cortical matter present in the bag. Because the vitreous was present in the antechamber, so I did decent uh, anterior vitrectomy to remove the vitreous present in the antechamber. And simultaneously, I cleared the all cortical fluid present in the antechamber. So I did anterior vitrectomy, cleared all vitreous present in the antechamber and in the wound. When I was doing antivitectomy, I was thinking which eye will to be implanted, uh, whether I should go with the ACI will or I should uh, go with the um, iris claw lens or a scleral fixation or the glued eye will. I made a small PBI also, then filled the chamber with viscoelastic and uh, checked whether um, the vitreous is clear from the antechamber or not. And then finally, I decided to implant antechamber eye will in the antechamber. I always maintain the library of uh, these uh, emergency lenses. So without any problem I implanted will and I checked whether the haptics are at the angles or not. Then finally I closed the wound through shoelace suturing.
If you are doing regular surgeries, one day you have to face such situations. However, patient is dependent on you and you are the final authority to take decision against the patient's benefit. Finally, I close the corneal wound. Always bury the knot under the in the substances of cornea. Otherwise, it will hurt the patient and it will act as a nidus for mucus and infection. Then thoroughly wash the antechamber from the viscoelastic and always check whether there is a vitreous or not. I always made a habit of covering the uh, corneal wound with the canyon tava. I knew what I did was my decision and I know that every surgeon can act differently in the same situations. Thanks for watching.